Welcome to a tutorial on how to use and create items inside of Autodesk PLM 360. First, we'll go over to the main menu and we'll take a look at all of the categories we have. And these categories are generally departments inside of uh, your company. They might be uh, different personas, different people. Within each one of these, and you'll see coming off as a side menu, are individual workspaces. So for instance, if I come down to here to service and support, take a look at service request. Service request is a workspace that we have built out and we have the possibility of creating new items inside of PLM 360. For example, to create a new item, we'll come up to the upper right and click on new will be given a form and within this form any time that we see a red asterisk this is uh, an indication of a field that is mandatory other fields that don't have that can be filled in at a later time so let's take a minute fill out this form and create our first item workspaces can possess a variety of different fields sometimes you will have drop downs to choose from other times we'll have free text fields where we can put in a value We'll have date fields, so for instance, we can go and select a time in either today, the future, or the past. We can optionally select from a source. We'll say that this came in through an email, and oftentimes we'll have a paragraph field, so we can go and fill out paragraphs of all the description or copy and paste it out of another form. Working down the page, you'll notice that this particular workspace, its form is separated into logical groupings. These are known as sections. So we've completed the first detail section. Next we have the service location and we can go and fill out, in this case it's looking for an address and we'll say that this is suite 300. This will fill in a map for us later on. Down here under the service detail we can supply it to a chosen person, scheduled date, and we'll say 9 a.m. Other fields might be uh, non-mandatory, yet ones that we can come in and populate later. Finally, when we're done, we'll click on Save. Once the item is successfully created, we'll see it comes back and it's actually going to show us our first form. This was our initial tab. Here's the data we entered. Down here we see our service location and based on the address that we put in we have a nice little Google Maps mashup here. Down here we have the service details, the sign to, so the results of all of the drop down fields and the date fields are appearing and again we can come back in and fill out this other information later on. Another unique part about this record is we can see the owner and change summary so we can see the date, who created and who is the current owner. Now that we have an item created for this particular workspace, we can come up and create another item. We can clone it. Cloning the item gives you the option of keeping most of the fields that you have, yet hitting the ground running with uh, a new item that's unique with a new number. We can, if we have the permission to do so, we can choose to delete this particular item from the workspace. Remember, this is something that uh, is a permissions it's a security based uh, function and we have the option to pin it to our dashboard and this is going to show up as a dashboard link something that we can come back to later on so next let's take a look at the ability to clone existing items inside of PLM 360 So let's examine the action of cloning an item. For this, I'm going to come over to our quality area and take a look at existing inspections. From the inspections list, we see that we have some that have passed and one that has failed. Now, the advantage of cloning a record means that we can keep some of the same data that we had before. Perhaps, in this case, we want to clone all of the activities that led this to fail before and see if we can run the same test and get them to pass. We'll clone the activities, the attachments, 
we'll say that this is mid process and we'll save it with a new item and a new record we get a new number and this allows us to go through and keep some of the same actions or activities that we had before coming over to the activities tab we've saved ourselves some work and as we come in to select edit we can come down and we see we have a visual inspection operation some data was entered and over here we can see because we had failed the flag went red in this case since it's a new record we'll put this through and we'll say well this passed clicking on save we'll turn this to green and we've saved ourselves a little bit of time running a new inspection Now with our new inspection created, let's take a look over on the left. This is the left search view. And within the left search view, you can go in and uh, edit the default view. Right now we're seeing the item descriptor by the current state. And that might be good. We have an option down here to filter out. But this is a good view to have. This is going to list all of the, in this case, the inspections in the system in their current state. However, if we wanted to make our own custom view that pertains just to inspections that are in the open state because these others are closed, whether they're passed or failed, they're closed. Let's examine the workflow of adding a new custom view to this left search list. So I'm going to call this Open Inspections. Next, I'll choose the columns that I'd like displayed. In this case, I want the item descriptor, which is going to give me the item name and the identity of the inspected component. Next, I'm going to come down and grab the life's, the workflow state as indicated by current state. Now, to make sure that I filter out and I get only items that are in the open state, I'll come down here to the filter from the filter, choose the metadata, choose the field. In this case, I want the current state to contain the word open. Click on save, and it will go and apply that default view. I can come back at any time and go to the default view, which is to show everything. But when I want to see all open inspections in the system, I simply select it from the drop-down caret, and it's going to show me all open inspection items.